All right. Shalom. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Let's get back into the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Uh, happy Sabbath to everyone. All right. I had some technical difficulties earlier. I don't know if I'm still having it, but we'll go ahead and just press on. <laughs> Technology. Gotta love it. All right. We're in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 all the way down to verse 20. You got your scriptures? All right, let's go. Verse 1. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. All right, context. Moses who is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Levi, wrote the first five books of the scriptures, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Moses wasn't even born at this time, but the Lord revealed his knowledge unto him. So the Lord is dealing with a certain people in the earth, but People don't really understand that. From Genesis to Revelation, it's, it's about a certain people, a certain seed. He's not dealing with everybody in the earth, but your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system have deceived people that think that the scriptures are for everybody, but it's not. And hopefully you're going to see it as we continue today. So again, in verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, so he didn't say it to anybody else. Abraham had a brother, two brothers. One had died and the other one was alive, but he wasn't talking to them. <laughs> and so that's that's what you got to understand and keep in context. This is who God is talking to. He said to Abram. He didn't say it to nobody else. He's choosing people who he's going to choose. And people think, okay, it's for everybody. It's not. And we're going to see that in a minute. He said, get thee out of thy country. He told him, you got to go. Get Pack your bags. I want you to leave. Get from thy kindred and from thy father's house. I don't want you hanging around your people. You got to go. You got to get out of your father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now, he said this to Abraham, and Abraham heard him. Verse 2, it says, And I will make thee, make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So he's talking only and specifically to Abraham. He's not talking to anybody else in the world on the earth. He said, I will make thee a great nation. He's not talking to everybody else, but people want to say it's about everybody. He said, and I will bless thee, he's talking to Abraham, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So Abraham... It wasn't changed to Abraham yet, but Abram, the Lord told him, you're going to be a blessing. And that's what Abraham became. He, he became God's person. He was a blessing. Verse 3, it says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now this is a scripture that your 501c3 corporations take out of context. Because they don't connect the Old Testament with the New Testament. They take it out of context. He said, I will bless them that bless thee. So he's talking to Abraham. He said, if anybody bless you, I will bless them. If anybody curse you, I will curse them. So he's only talking to Abraham. He's not talking to everybody else in the whole wide world. He's talking to a specific person. He said, in thee. In who? Abraham. Shall all families of the earth be blessed? So all families that's in Abraham, that's what you have to keep in context. All families of the earth will be blessed. And then again, he's still talking to, because all of Abraham's seed, not seeds, seed, is scattered in all the earth. We're mixed in with all the families of the earth. <laughs> The Lord had warned us throughout the scriptures, if you don't, we don't obey his word, his commandments, his statutes, that he would scatter us. And that's what he did. He scattered 
all 12 tribes of Israel. He scattered the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom first. They were no longer referred to as Israel, but were referred to as Gentiles, Greeks, uncircumcision, or wherever location where they were living. All the epistles are to the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom that was referred to as Ephesians, Corinthians, Galatians, Colossians, Philippians. Those are the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom. And then the southern kingdom was Judah with Benjamin. And Jesus said that we would be led away captive into all nations. So the southern kingdom of Judah, we're, we're in all nations on the earth. We're mixed in with all the nations of the earth. We're mixed in with all the different tongues, languages, everything. And so when the scripture talks about all the tribes of the earth, it's still talking about God's chosen people because we're mixed in with them. Another scripture in the Old Testament that said that Judah would be scattered to the four corners of the earth. So we're we're a part of all the different families of the earth. We speak all these languages. When we were scattered, when we were brought into captivity, they stripped us of our native tongue, Hebrew. That's why we don't speak Hebrew anymore. And so we're part of all these different languages, tongues, nations, and tribes. He said, and shall all, all families of the earth shall be blessed. So because we're mixed in with all these different families, that's why they're blessed. I mean, it was <laughs> the Lord knows what he's doing. And people just take the scriptures out of context and really think it's about everybody. But it's really about God's chosen people because we're scattered all over the earth. And if we wasn't scattered all over the earth, the earth wouldn't, wouldn't be blessed. Let's go to verse 4. It says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. So the Lord told Abraham to get up, pack your bags, and go <laughs> to a land that I will show you. And Abraham departed. He heard the voice of the Lord, and he did what the voice of the Lord told him to do. The Lord had spoken unto him. So if the Lord spoke to him, that means he heard what the Lord said. And then it says, and Lot went with him. And that's trouble <laughs> because he didn't speak to Lot. He only spoke to Abraham. And so that's... <laughs> Even today, when the Lord speaks to you, everybody else thinks that the Lord is speaking to them too. He, he's not speaking. He's only speaking to Abraham. He wasn't speaking to Lot. And so that's what happens when, when, when other people think that the Lord is talking to everybody in the whole wide world. He's not talking to everybody in the whole wide world. <laughs> he's only talking to Abraham. But if Lot went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And they mentioned that his age for a reason because people was living a long, very long time. But by and by, the, the, the years of life starting to get short. And so they said Abraham was 75 years old. And at this time, Abraham, uh, he was married to Sarai. And they didn't have any kids, and he was 75 years old. So they're, they're mentioning this for a reason. He's, he's getting up in age. Uh, verse 5, it says, And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had, that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. So Abraham obeyed the voice of the Lord. The Lord told him, you got to go, Abraham. Get up and go. I'm going to send you somewhere. He didn't know where he was going. He just said, okay. <laughs> so he got up and he packed all his stuff, told his wife, come on, we're leaving. <laughs> and then Lot said, well, I'm coming with you. So Lot packed his stuff and was with them. And so all their substance, everything that they had, the souls that they had, they gathered, they got, that they had in Haran, and they went into the land called Canaan. Now, Canaan is one of the sons of Ham. 
Ham had four sons. Uh, is Mizraim, uh, Cush, uh, Foot, and Canaan. Mizraim is, is Egypt. Uh, Cush is Ethiopia. Foot is Libya. And Canaan. Now today, all that land that they call the Middle East, that's really the land of Canaan. That's what the Lord promised to Abraham. But they want you to think that it's that little square piece of land called the nation of Israel. It's a lot bigger than that. And see, that's what the Japheth Gentiles, the ruling class people in the earth today, they have taken over the earth and they've changed the landmarks of the earth. So <laughs> they can't. The Lord knows what's what, so whatever they've done is still going, the Lord is still going to have the final say. So it doesn't matter that they've changed the landmarks. But the Lord told Abraham to go, and that he didn't tell him where to go. He just said, go. <laughs> he said, I'm going to show you. And so he ended up going into the land of Canaan, the land of Canaan. So this is where he was showing him where to go. Now, uh, Canaan, if you remember correctly, Noah cursed Canaan. Canaan is a son of Ham, and Noah cursed him. He said, you're going to be a servant of servants. And so Canaan is a servant of Israel. In Israel, uh, we are serving now because we're, we didn't obey the Lord. We're in the land of our captivity. So Canaan is a servant of servants. And all the people of Canaan, all, all the people of Ham were dark-skinned people, dark race of people. Uh, and also Noah, I mean, uh, Shem, they're dark race people. And Abraham is a dark race people. People don't want to acknowledge it for obvious reasons because they want to say all of God's chosen people are white. That's why they painted Jesus white. <laughs> The scripture said Jesus had hair like wool and feet like brass. And so that doesn't equal to what people call white. And so Abraham, the Lord showed him where to go. And he, he guided him toward the people of his, the same color. They're not the same people, but they're the same color. <laughs> and that's important to understand because that's what they did throughout all the scriptures. They went south and then they went on down into Egypt and we're going to see that so he told he showed them to go uh, they went forth to go into the land of Canaan so that's where the Lord showed him to go and into the land of Canaan they came verse 6 and Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim unto a plain of Morai and the Canaanites was then in the land. So Abraham just kept moving as the Lord <laughs> told him where to go. And he was just passing through different land. He, he said the land unto the place of Sikkim, unto the plain of Moray. And so he just kept going. And the Canaanites was in the land. So everywhere he, he was going, he saw the Canaanites. They were still in the land. And they're pointing out this for a reason and for a purpose because the Lord is going to give all this land to, to Abraham. But the land is in possession of a people called the Canaanite. They possess this land. The Lord is going to take it from them and give it to Abraham. That's why they're pointing it out. The Canaanites was in the land. Verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So the Lord appeared unto Abraham. He saw the Lord. <laughs> and the Lord said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And so the Lord only appeared to Abraham. He didn't appear to everybody else in the whole wide world. But people think, okay, because he appeared to Abraham, Abraham is the father of everybody. He's not the father of everybody in the whole world. He's the father to a specific people. He said, unto thy seed 
will I give this land. He's not giving the land to everybody else in the whole wide world. So people don't like to hear this because God is making a specific point about a specific person. <laughs> His chosen people in the in the in the in the earth. And it's not about everybody else. He said, unto thy seed will I give this land. He's not giving this land to nobody else but his chosen people, Abraham's seed. <clears throat> and there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So uh, Abraham made a landmark. He built an altar. He worshiped the Lord. He said, I got to remember this because the Lord made a promise to me. At this, so he built this altar so that he can remember what the Lord said and what the Lord had promised him that he was going to give him this land. So the altar was a place of remembrance to worship the Lord. He built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Verse 8 And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And so Abraham kept pressing on his way through. He came to this mountain. He said he, he, he removed thence unto a mountain <laughs> on the east of Bethel. So he just kept going. He saw this big mountain. So he pitched his tent, having built along the west and high on the east. And so he built another altar to the Lord. <laughs> he said, Lord, I'm following you. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm going the right way where you're showing me. So he called on the name of the Lord. He built another altar, a landmark, to remember where the Lord was taking him. And so he, the scripture said he called on the name of the Lord of the Lord. It didn't say what the name of the Lord was at this time, but Abraham called on him. <laughs> Maybe he said, God of Abraham, <laughs> whatever he called him, he called on the name of the Lord. Verse 9, and Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And so the uh, Abraham just kept moving as the Lord was Guiding him, keep going this way. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm going, but I don't know where I'm going. So the Lord was guiding his, his path. Abraham journeyed, going on still toward the south. And they're pointing this out for a reason. Because they was coming from the north, Syria. And they were going down toward what, what we call Egypt. The land called Egypt. So they were journeying toward the south. Verse 10, and there was a famine in the land, and Abraham, Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And so when you're following the Lord, you're obeying what he's telling you to do, <laughs> you're going to have some bumps in the road and things not going to always go smoothly. But the Lord is with Abraham. He know the Lord. The Lord is speaking to him. And so he's just obeying the voice of the Lord. So now where he is, there's a famine in the land. It means you can't grow anything. Uh, the, the crops are not, the, the ground is not being watered. There's a famine. <laughs> it's a lack that's in the land where he is in the land of Canaan. And so he said, well, we can't stay here. Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn. But the famine was great in the land. It was great in the land of Canaan. And so Egypt represents authority. It represents the rulership in the earth at this time. That's what you have to understand about Egypt. They were the ruling people of the earth at this time. And so he said, well, we could just go down here. And again, the, he's going to people he's never been around, but they're the same color as, as him. He can mix in with them. And I'm bringing it out for a reason because it's true. He didn't go up north. He didn't go west. He didn't go east. He went south. <clears throat> he went down into what we call Africa. Verse 12. 
I mean, excuse me, verse 11. And it came to pass when he when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. So Abraham was pondering where he was going. He knew he was going into Egypt. Now he knew about Egypt. Because <laughs> uh, it's, it's the ruling place on the earth right now. It's the, uh, it's the place of authority of, of the earth. That's where the rulership is in the earth. So he knew about it. <laughs> And so he was making plans. He was saying, I don't know if these people are going to be fearing God or not. <clears throat> so before he got there, he said to Sarah, look, you a beautiful woman. <clears throat> so he was saying this for a reason and for a purpose. And, and, and you have to understand, uh, Abraham, is he, he got all this stuff with him and <clears throat> and. He's going down to a ruling, a ruling people, and if they want to take advantage of him, they can. So he, he's, he's making a plan with, with his wife, Sarai. He said, you are very beautiful. He's, he's getting her on board with what he's about to say. <laughs> Verse 12, he said, therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife. And they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. <laughs> and so this is what Abraham is saying to Sarah. This is what's going to happen because you're beautiful. They're going to just kill me and take you. <laughs> I can't fight them. They're more than me. They're stronger than me. I love you. But what am I going to do? So <laughs> we got to have a plan. We got to figure out what we're going to do when we get down there. <laughs> so they're trying to figure all this out before they get there. They don't want to get there and don't have a plan. <laughs> Verse 13. So this is what Abraham said. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And so Abraham reasoned in his mind and that, you know, if they, they think that you're my wife, then they're going to just kill me and just take you. But if, if we say that you're my sister, they probably might let me live since you're not my wife. They're still going to take you. <laughs> but at least I will be alive and my soul shall live because of thee, <laughs> because you're my sister. So that was the plan. Verse 14, and it came to pass that when Abraham was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. <laughs> and so they kept journeying until they finally got there they, and they came into Egypt. Again, Egypt is a place of rulership, authority. The Egyptians beheld the woman. And so they knew about all everybody else that was there and what they looked like. And they saw Sarah. She was different. She like, whoa, <laughs> this woman is gorgeous. They took a look at her and everybody had to just stop and speak and say something. The Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. She was beautiful to look upon. So Abraham had a beautiful wife. Verse 15 the princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And so the princes of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the ruler of, of Egypt. <laughs> and so his princes was looking at her and they said, this woman is beautiful. So they told Pharaoh about her. You got to see this lady. <laughs> she just came into town. And so the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. She was taken basically into captivity. She was be, she had became Pharaoh's property, taken into his house. Abraham couldn't do anything about it. He knew that was going to happen. <laughs> when you go into a land of rulership, you don't have any say so in what happened to you. You're you're a guest there. And so that's why Abraham had a plan. He knew that they were going to take her 
And that's exactly what they did. Verse 16, And he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she she asses and camels. And so this is what happened. <clears throat> Abraham got down there and said, This is my sister. And so Pharaoh said, Okay, how much for your sister? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> and so it that's how it was, that's how it is. Women, you have a price on your head, whether you like it or not. And women have been being bought and sold since the beginning of time. And there's a saying, I don't know if you're familiar with it. <clears throat> it said, why are women called female? Because there is a fee, there is a price. <clears throat> Abraham, he knew that they was going to make some type of offering for her. He was already aware of it. And so it says he entreated Abraham well. <laughs> he said for her sake. He, he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. So he got paid very well for Sarah. <laughs> and so women, don't sell yourself cheap. <laughs> Be a woman of high standards. Don't just be a woman of high standards. I keep it at that. But Abraham was reimbursed for Sarah, his wife, but he told him, this is my sister, so that he could stay alive. Verse 17, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And so the Lord chose Abraham, and he wasn't going to let anything happen to him. He had already told him, look, I'm with you. If anybody bless you, they will be blessed. If anybody curse you, they will be cursed. The, the scripture says, touch not my prophet, touch not my prophet and, and do my, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And so Abraham belongs to the Lord. The, Abraham is the Lord's property. <laughs> and so the Lord plagued Pharaoh. He's like, hey, no, this ain't going to happen. But Pharaoh is only doing what Abraham said. You know, he said, it ain't my wife. So Pharaoh like, oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but everything was going fine until Abraham and Sarah came to Egypt. They didn't have any issues, any problems. Life was good. All of a sudden, things began to change when Abraham and Sarah came to town and they brought Sarah into Pharaoh's house. <laughs> things are starting to go wrong, terribly wrong. The Lord began to plague Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So things started getting ugly and bad really fast. And Pharaoh was like, okay, what's what's going on? <laughs> oh, verse 18. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? And so Pharaoh was getting upset. He like, something ain't right. <laughs> what's all this trouble? What's all these plagues? Something ain't right. So he called Abraham and said, what, what is this you've done unto me? You've done it. Because before you came, everything that was going perfect in my country. I didn't have any issues. I didn't have any problems. Now we're having all these plagues. And I know it's got something to do with you because before you came, everything was perfect. So what, what is it that you've done? Why did you not tell me that this is your wife? So Pharaoh figured it out. He's like, you, you, you lied to me. This woman ain't your sister. Otherwise, none of this will be happening. Verse 19. Why said it thou, she is my sister? So I might have taken her to be to, to wife 
Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. <laughs> so Pharaoh was angry, he was mad, he was upset, and he could have killed Abraham, but he didn't want to do that because they were already being plagued and he didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> he said, okay, this woman, she is your wife. You lied to me. So take your wife and get out and don't come back. <laughs> Uh, he said, I, I, I could have laid with this wife, lay with your, your, your wife, and because you told me she was your sister. And so whatever you've done, you, you got to go. You're not welcome here anymore. Get out. <laughs> Verse 20. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. So Pharaoh told his men, look, don't keep him in your sight. Escort him to the border out of our country. <laughs> get him out of here. Don't hurt him. Just get him, make sure he leave and never come back. <laughs> so they sent him away, his wife and all that he had. Well, that was chapter 12. <laughs> it was interesting. But again, the Lord is only dealing with a certain people in the earth. And that's what you need to understand. People want to say, no, it's about everybody. It's not about everybody. And from here on, from Genesis chapter 12, it's about God's chosen people. And it's never going to change, even into the New Testament. That's what you need to understand. People get to the New Testament and they think, oh, God loves everybody. God so loved the world. Yeah, he loved the world. The scripture says Abraham is heir to the world. So it's still about Abraham and his seed. It's not about everybody else. But people take the scriptures out of context and your 501c3 corporations have deceived you. Now what you also have to understand about God's chosen people is not the people over in the land called the nation of Israel. They are not. All of God's chosen people are scattered. So the people over in the land they're, that's why they call themselves Jewish. Jewish and Jews are not the same thing. And they know it. That's why they call themselves Jewish. It means like. They're like. <laughs> it means they're fake. They're phonies. They're artificial. They're not real. <laughs> they're not the chosen people. They're Ashkenaz, Khazarians. Japheth, Gentiles, and Edomites that have taken over that land by fraud and deceit. And since 1948, everybody on earth accepts them as God's chosen people. But God's chosen people are scattered. So thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.